Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto and today I want to go over diabetic shoe fitting tips. So this is going to be a presentation for you if you have diabetes or if you have a loved one or a caregiver that you're taking care of someone with diabetes or if you fit shoes even as a pedorthist. A pedorthist is a profession where they uh, fit shoes or orthotics or different types of devices for people with uh, diabetes. Okay, so let's, let's get right into it. We're going to look at some common tips about finding the right shoes if you have diabetes. So some of the most important tips are to shop for shoes in the afternoon. Well, why you may ask do I have to buy shoes in the afternoon? Because in the afternoon is when your feet tend to be more swollen. So it's good to shop for shoes in the afternoon after your feet are more swollen. If you go in the morning, they might not have as much swelling to them and you might buy the wrong size. Also, wear the same types of socks to the store that you intend to wear with the shoes. Uh, for example, if you wear like a nylon sock, but you're going to wear a normal thickness sock or a diabetic sock afterwards, that shoe may be a little bit tight. Measuring both feet. Most people have one foot that's larger than the other. So when you're measuring your feet as a diabetic, you should first of all measure your feet, right? Uh, you shouldn't just buy a pair off the counter uh, without having it measured. You should measure your feet to make sure you're in the right type of a shoe. And a lot of these uh, tips are, are for people that have diabetes and, and it's for people that aren't only getting the diabetic shoes. So there are certain shoes that are made for diabetics, which we're going to talk about, but these are just overall general tips that if you have diabetes, you should be aware of. Walk around in the shoes. I think that's important. Don't just try on a pair, say they look good, and, and put them on and, and leave with them. You should walk around. Uh, if possible, walk a little bit longer to see how they feel. Make sure that none of the seams bother you. Make sure they're not, they're not injuring your foot or squishing on your foot. And I tend to recommend getting, it, getting them when you bring them home. Wear them in the house for the first couple of days so you can keep them clean. And if you do find that there's a problem, within a couple of days you can bring them back to the store. Now, I, I did run this presentation by a couple of pedorthists, and they asked me to add some of these topics in here. And this is the one that they asked to add. Shoes should have some room in the front as the toes splay when you're walking. And what I mean by that is when you're, uh, when you're walking, your toes tend to splay out, and you should have a little bit of room in the front. They shouldn't uh, be too tight if you have diabetes. You need, and for a lot of people, you're going to feel like your shoe that you're at the proper size for you is actually a little bit big. You may think, well, hey, this is too big for me, but usually it's not. It, it should feel a little bit big. And there is another reason why it could feel big, and that could be neuropathy. Neuropathy is a lack of sensation that a lot of people with diabetes have, and so you may not be able to feel the tips of your toes in your shoe that maybe feels right will actually be too small. Uh, also, don't trust your comfort level uh, rather than the shoe size. Once again, that because of the neuropathy, uh, that could cause that problem. And pay attention to the width and where the widest part of your foot is. You can see here, this is a patient that has a hammer toe, which is that toe that curves up like this. Uh, also a bunion, which is the, the inside, and the tailor's bunion, which is on the outside. So the more of these other things that you have, like the bunion and the tailor's bunion, the wider your shoe needs to be. So either your shoe needs to be wide, or it has to have some type of stretch material on the side to allow for that bunion and that tailor's bunion. There's a little tip here I, I recommend to get the right shoe size, it's actually to take a tracing of your foot uh, or to step on the shoe liner. So one option is when you're at home, step and then outline your foot. And then when you do that outline of your foot, then you put that on the actual liner. You can see the picture on the right is that liner. So you can either uh, put your foot on the liner to see if any part of your foot is hanging over the side. But if your big toe is hanging over the side or your bunion's hanging over the side, it's probably too narrow for you. And you should get something that's a little bit wider. And, and just be, be told, most shoes tend to be quite narrow. And as a diabetic, you need to find a, an appropriate shoe. And don't worry, if, if it's, it's the right size, you should wear it. Don't worry, it's not all about looks. That's the problem with the, with the shoes. Uh, also, make sure you get a, a Brannock device, and maybe this can be used to measure the width or the length of the shoe. This can help as well. Um, also, feel the inside for any tags or any seams and examine the soles uh, for any cushioning or traction. Uh, diabetic shoes are notorious for not having any traction. I don't know if they make them in Florida, but they usually don't make them in New England. 
and you have to make sure you have traction on them. Otherwise, you could be at a fall risk. Uh, also, uh, be aware of the, any seams inside. The seam, uh, if, for example, if you have a big bunion on the side of your foot and the seam is right there, it could push on and, and create friction. It could push on your toes if there's a seam on the top of it. Uh, where, that's where it's better to look for a kind of a stretchy fabric that works better than something with seams. What if you have a foot ulcer? Okay, a foot ulcer is a foot wound and you have diabetes. Um, you can be fit for shoes, but you shouldn't be wearing diabetic shoes. Okay, I always recommend if someone has an ulcer, you should be in either a surgical shoe or a walking boot or something else until that wound or that ulcer heals. Okay, you, should, you shouldn't wear a diabetic shoe. Diabetic shoes, they're going to squish your toes together too much. And wearing some type of a, a surgical shoe or a, a walking boot that's going to give you the width that you need. It's going to slow you down, frankly. That's, that's the important thing about an ulcer. So let's look a little bit about the composition of a diabetic shoe. Um, here are some examples on the right, these six shoes there. You can see those are all diabetic shoes. The main aspect of a diabetic shoe is that they have more depth to them, so they are deeper inside. And many times in the, on the sole region, it's, it's indented to give it more depth. And then you have a spacer, then you have a little, that little thing that looks kind of like the same skin color, uh, kind of a, almost like a peach color. That is the diabetic insole, and that has the same density as your skin. And that's where it's important to have your, your custom insoles, your custom orthotics that come with it. Each diabetic pair of shoes comes with three sets of insoles or three sets of inserts. And there's a couple of different types of inserts. There are some that are heat molded. And there's another type that are custom molded. The heat molded are the ones that are put in a, almost like in a convection oven for a few seconds, and then you step on it, and it kind of forms to the lumps and bumps in your foot. The other ones that are custom molded are ones that are actually modified on the bottom by adding different pads and, and things like that, that they can be fitting your foot appropriately. And it, it, can be, it can be a challenge to find a diabetic shoe. It can be a, a challenge. Uh, to find a, someone that specializes in giving you diabetic shoes. We'll look at some of the options here later on. Uh, where can I get the shoes? So let's talk about the process. So first of all, you have the, the primary care doctor or your endocrinologist. You can get the shoes from them, meaning you can get the shoe prescription from them, and they are the ones that are going to fill out the paperwork. There is paperwork that needs to be filled out, and you have to verify that you either have four pulses, a foot deformity, uh, lack of sensation with a callus. You have to have some type of a problem. Not just because you have diabetes can you get diabetic shoes. Not everyone with diabetes can get them. They're, you have to have certain risk factors. And then who's, who actually sells them or does them? Many times a podiatrist may do it. So a podiatrist is a foot doctor and that specializes in feet and they may sell the shoes in their office or use it through your insurance, of course. A pedorthist. A pedorthist is someone that has extra training in shoes and they can fit you for a diabetic shoe. Uh, an orthotist is a person that makes orthotics. There's different types of orthotists. Uh, they can make foot orthotics or different types of orthotics for braces for your body. There are some specialty shoe stores that sell diabetic shoes. There are some people that are called DME providers. So what a DME provider is someone that provides durable medical equipment. And that is what a diabetic shoe is considered, a diabetic uh, the durable medical equipment. Some pharmacies uh, sell diabetic shoes, and once again, yeah, I think you should be careful if a person doesn't have any training and they're trying to give you a shoe. It may not be any problem if you have a normal foot, but if you have kind of a complex foot, you should probably see someone with a little bit more training. Online, they probably sell them. You may not be able to buy them, get them through your insurance, but you could buy them. But once again, take caution because you'll get them, you'll get the inserts, but they're not going to be custom molded or heat molded to your foot. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the shoe width and depth. Uh, this is something that's very important. If you see the picture on the right-hand side, you can see the, 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 the foot that's very squished inside the shoe. That's what you don't want. You need a wider toe box, especially if you have a bunion or a bunionette or different types of bumps. And the other thing that you need is something that's extra depth. So for the other picture underneath there on the right, you can see the hammer toes that are kind of curved down. You need a deeper, a deeper shoe or something that has some type of fabric that can allow some stretching for those hammer toes. That's real important if you have diabetes. Uh, and that's what, if you look at the shoe composition here, uh, a soft leather padded with foam, that's going to be for the, and then the extra depth that's, that's circled there underneath. Those are going to be important things. 
Another thing that's real important with diabetic shoes is you want to make sure that your shoe is easy to put on. And there are a couple of techniques. Uh, one is having Velcro that can have a strap or a tongue that can be lifted up all the way to allow you to put on that shoe a lot easier. So the ease of use of putting on a shoe is real important if you have diabetes. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be hard to put on. Also, uh, having a forgiving material. And this is what I really recommend for most of my diabetics that have kind of some foot issues like hammer toes or bunions. I recommend a softer material or some type of a stretch material. There are different types of stretch shoes that uh, can allow the bunions and things to push out and no one can really see it. Now, if you can't find a stretch shoe, you can bring it to a cobbler and have it kind of modified. Let's talk a little bit about these, um, the special footbeds. You may be wondering, well, uh, why do I get shoes every single year? Well, the shoe doesn't wear out every year, but these liners, they're made to wear out. There are custom ones and there are non-custom ones, and we went over that a little bit. Uh, the picture on the right is a non-custom insole, and that would be heated up and it would be uh, formed to your foot. Uh, how do you evaluate uh, the diabetic shoe insert? Well, basically you squish it with your fingers, and if there's no more cushioning, it's probably worn out. And they're made to wear out every four months. That's why you get three pairs. I think it's important to write the date on the bottom so you know when to switch it, and they should be replaced even though they're worn out. And I have a lot of patients, they say, well, I have you know, three or four pairs of diabetic shoes, and that's why I don't want any new ones. Well, the, the shoe is made only to last as long as the insert. So unless you can get more inserts, the, the inserts aren't doing their job in reducing the friction. And some people also might need a, a custom orthotic if they have different uh, foot conditions that, that would need it. A couple of other tips about shoe closure. It's important to get a good shoe closure. If you, if you don't want to do a Velcro, uh, Velcro tends to work the best for closing shoes and allowing for any swelling in your feet. Another thing that you can do is um, that picture on the right, there are actually laces that are elastic. So elastic laces. That, that is something that might be a good idea for you. If you, if you need a shoe, it's easier to put the shoe on, but once again, it will also allow you to uh, accommodate if you, if you have some swelling at the end of the day. There are other types of adjustments that you might need to do with your scissors here, that picture on the upper left. Uh, you can go to a cobbler, you can see that little, kind of that ball and socket there where it pushes in and stretches out the shoe if you have a bunion. And then also if you have a limb length discrepancy, the picture on the bottom on the left, it's an example of a, an addition from the bottom if, if you have a, a height difference in the shoe. Sometimes you can do an insert in the shoe, but if the height difference is too big, you need to bring it to a cobbler and they can make that addition on the outside of the shoe. Uh, once again, swelling, some other uh, shoe fitting problems. These are some specific things for you if you have diabetes and if you're looking for shoes. So how do you deal with swelling? As we talked about, getting a shoe that's extra depth, uh, and then also some stretch laces, or even um, the Velcro. Those can be help swelling. If you have a blister or a callus you see on the side of that little toe, you need to make sure that shoe is wide enough, because there's going to be some rubbing. Uh, and also just be careful you aren't being too active, or if you don't have a hammer toe there, that little hammer toe can rub on the side of the shoe. Make sure there's no seam in that area, and make sure that your shoe is wide enough. If you have a blister and ulcer. And once again, if you have an ulcer or an actual wound, you don't want to wear uh, those uh, shoes until you get that healed. Uh, blistering uh, can be blistering on the back of the heel or other, other types of areas. Uh, and I kind of like to simply explain that a blister is usually the same as an ulcer if you have diabetes. So it's the same thing. A blister and an ulcer are the same thing. They usually happen on areas of high pressure or callousing, okay? usually from improper fit or too much walk. So if they're in, you know, not fitting well, you're going to be slipping in the back, or if you're just doing way too much, that can be a problem. Now, how about blood underneath the nail? So blood underneath the nail, if, if that nail is still attached, you should leave it. If it's detached, you should see someone to have the nail removed. But usually it's caused from a shoe that's either too tight or too small, or you're doing too much walk. So just be aware if this happens. If you get a brand new shoe and you find that you get blood underneath the nail, you really have to determine if that's the proper shoe for you. Uh, once again, a blister or an ulcer caused by too much walking or lack of movement of the joint. A lot of times if you have arthritis in the joint, uh, one of the joints before where the blister is, it can, it can cause increased movement at the joint after where the, where the movement is. Uh, also, how do you find shoes if you have a big bunion or an overlapping hammer toe? This is a difficult foot. You can see that big bunion, the hammer toe. 
it's difficult. You're going you're gonna to want a shoe that's very, very deep and one that has the stretch fabric. That's going to be best. You're not going to want a very narrow shoe. Otherwise, it's going to be too uncomfortable for you if you have a foot that looks like this. And if you have a hammer toe, this is an example of an ulcer. You can see the top of it. You can see how that toe is kind of curved up and that rubbed on the shoe. That, that ulcer is a problem. Uh, to, f to fix it with a shoe, you need one that has extra depth in the stretch fabric, or you may even need to surgically fix either that hammer toe or that bunion. That would be a way to fix it as well. There are some uh, other solutions if you have calluses. See that big callus on the upper right-hand corner? You see from the toes are rubbing, it has that big callus between there. That callus should be shaved down, but there are different types of toe caps. There are spacers, different things that can help pad that area to make your foot feel better. Uh, but normally with a foot like that, you're going to be seeing a professional to do the calluses and the nails. And uh, you have to make sure, though, your shoes, when you buy them, they have extra width, so they're not going to be rubbing as much. Uh, hammer toes on the bottom or on the tips of the hammer toes, there is going to be calluses. And these calluses, you can use a crest pad, which is that pad on the bottom right-hand corner. There, that's a crest pad that's like a crest, like a half moon that goes underneath the toes. You can also modify and add that into your orthotic. If you do a custom insole, that can be added there to put less pressure. And then, once again, you could fix those surgically as well. And then what about socks? Uh, diabetic socks are recommended because they have increased cushion, they reduce your moisture, they're non-binding, and they don't have any seams. That, that's what makes a diabetic sock. And I always recommend just finding a place where you can go and get them for a dollar a pair. And once they wear out, you should switch them. Don't wear them too long. And just be careful. You don't want a sock that has seams or that's too tight. If you're finding that your sock is making lines around your legs because of your swelling, it's probably too tight. So you may want to consider a diabetic sock. And also uh, a compression sock, if you have a lot of swelling, a compression sock may be indicated. But really be careful on your toes because if the toes squish together too much, they create sores from that squishing of the compression socks. What if, if you don't have diabetes, what shoe do I recommend? I recommend New Balance. This is a, a 900 series New Balance. This is a very stable shoe. If you don't have diabetes, it works very well for my patients. Uh, and then some other questions. What about weak ankles? Uh, if you have diabetes or just weak ankles, I recommend a good boot here. That's going to help for that. How do you evaluate your shoe? This is a, a good tip. You want to bend and twist your shoe, and it should bend in the middle of the shoe, and it should twist in the middle. If it, if it, uh, I'm sorry, at the front of the foot. You can see at the front of the big toe joint, that's where it's bending and twisting. If it bends right in the middle, right in the middle, it's, it's not giving you enough support. Uh, if I have big feet and I need to wear men's shoes, if you're a woman, just wear them. It doesn't matter if it's a men or a woman's shoe. No one's going to know. You need to find something that's appropriate. So those are the, the diabetic shoe fitting tips here. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can certainly look on our website at Central Mass Podiatry. But here are just some great tips if you have diabetes and you're looking for the proper shoe. Thank you.